Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. We're in week 33 of our garden quilt project. We're making a quilt on a garden theme. And if you're not keen on making a quilt, most of our blocks work as standalone pieces. So there's something for everybody here. I will link a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go back and watch our previous videos. This week I've got an absolute corker for you. We're going to make a three dimensional brimstone butterfly. So I'm working on my mid blue fabric. I've cut a 20 by 20 centimeter square and this is going to be my background. I've also got some yellow pattern fabric and some plain yellow. And I've got some scrap paper which should give you a bit of a clue about our technique for today. I've got my paper scissors and embroidery scissors. I've got my heat erase pen, a pencil and my aqua marker. This is water erase and that's going to be useful today. I've got some pins, I've got my machine cotton and then I've got some embroidery threads. I won't use all of these probably but I've got my white which is 001, my yellow which is 298 my red which is 046, my blue which is 130 and I've got my darkest green which is 683. These are all Anchor brand, that's the brand that I tend to use but you could substitute with DMC or whatever brand you prefer. I've also got a little bit of wadding. Now this is optional, you could use an extra layer of fabric or a layer of felt but all you need to make sure of is that you're using a synthetic wadding. We don't want this one to shrink, so we're going to use a natural fibre wadding when we make up our quilt, and that will shrink as we wash it and give a lovely antique puckered feel, but we don't want this one to shrink at all. So this is an acrylic wadding, it's just a little scrap that I've got, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. I also have a pattern for this week. This is a two page pattern. You can download it from our website. I will put a link in the description below. It costs one pound to download. It's just a nominal fee to help support this channel. It's a two pager. So the first page has the stitch pattern and layout. And the second has the wing shapes and body shape. And this is where we're gonna start today. So I bought in my light box. If you don't have a light box, just hold your template and fabric up to a window. That's perfectly fine. And I'm going to start with my aqua pen because we are going to iron this. and I don't want my lines to disappear. I'm just going to sketch around the outline shapes. So I don't need any detail here. I just need the position of each of the main shapes. So that's the wings, the body, the antennae and the flight path. And you can see that shows up pretty well. Now I want some wings and I'm going to cut four of each wing and I'm going to make sure I've got a back and a front and a left and a right. So I'm going to start with the front of the top wings. I've got my patterned fabric here and I'm just sketching around the outside edge of that wing shape. And now I need to turn my pattern over and making sure I'm leaving some space for a border around the outside. I'm now going to trace it again and that will give me a left and right wing and I'll repeat this on my plain yellow fabric. And now I'm going to do the same with the bottom wing. So I've got my left, I've flipped my pattern over and I've got my right wing. So now I'm just going to trace over the stitch lines on the front of each wing and just make sure I've got those lines in position so that I can stitch over them. So now I'm going to make a little sandwich of my pieces. So I've got my front that's got the sketches on, I've got my wadding and I've got my back. I'm going to start with the wadding on the table. I'm going to lay the front of my piece right side up on the wadding and then I'm going to put my back piece right side down. Now I'm using a plain fabric so it doesn't matter which way around I've got it and I can see my lines through but I'm not sure they're picking up on the camera so I'm just going to trace around that onto that plain yellow fabric. I'm going to pin that little sandwich together and I've got some machine cotton here I've just knotted the end and I want to back stitch around the outline of that shape 
making sure that I leave an opening. So I'm starting on the flattest part of the wing, just along the bottom, but on the right hand side of that flat line. And I'm just going to make really small back stitches all the way around that outside edge. It's really important that you keep your stitches small and very close together. And back stitch, we just bring our thread through, work back one stitch length, and then on the back of the fabric, we go forward two stitch lengths to leave a gap and then bring our needle back down at the end of the first stitch that we did. I have got tutorials for this. I'll leave a link in a card at the top of the screen. So I've left maybe about four centimeters there and I'm just going to finish off my thread and snip that off. And I'm going to repeat that with my second wing. And now I've got my two wings that are stitched around. I can take out my pins and I'm going to trim around these now, leaving a bit of a border. So I'm leaving about a half centimetre border all the way around that wing shape. And this gives us a little quilt sandwich. So this is a little glimpse of the techniques that we're going to use to put our quilt together later on in the year. So we've got our sandwich of wadding and our back and front fabric and eventually that wadding is going to be caught in between the two. We just need to make sure that those fabrics are right sides together. So I've trimmed around my wing shape and now I'm going to slide my scissors in and just trim away any excess wadding. I've got to be careful that I'm not snipping through my back stitching because I don't want this to come apart, but we want to take some of the bulk out of that seam because we're going to turn this through in a moment. So I'm just taking away any excess wadding. I'm holding on to those off cuts. They're going to be useful later. So again, to take some of the bulk out of the seam, I'm now just going around and putting little snips in up to my stitch line. I've got to be really careful that I don't cut my back stitching and this will allow the fabric to fold over itself in the seam so that we get a nice neat seam. Now it's important here as you're turning through that you use the fabric and not the wadding. If you use the wadding to turn it through you will pull the wadding away from your stitching. So I'm just working on the two bits of fabric. It is a little bit fiddly just to get it started but once it's going it turns through really easily if you leave a decent sized gap. So I'm just getting my fingernails in there to just pull the fabric through just to get that turn going and I'm going to feed through all of the fabric so that we've got right sides facing out and you can use those sketch lines where you've put in the shape of the wing and the stitch pattern to tell you whether you've got all the fabric through because if you can see your sketch lines then you've turned it through thoroughly. So there's some little corners and points here that I just need to turn out and so you can use a pokey tool. The closed point of your scissors works really well as long as you're gentle. You could use a pencil. If you have a point turner, you can use that. A knitting needle, crochet hook, anything you like. I'm about to bring in a sewing machine screwdriver that I just happen to have handy. And I'm just easing that. I'm not jabbing at it because I don't want to break my stitching, but I'm just easing that into any corners and points that I've got on my wing so that I get the accurate shape. And I'm looking for my pen lines just to make sure that my seams are fully turned through. When I can see my pen lines, I think you can just about see them there at the join. I know that I've got my actual wing shape. You can always compare your turn shape to your pattern to make sure it's an accurate shape. So now we're going to close up that gap. I've got my machine cotton again and I'm just going to slide in my needle into the seam so that the knot is caught in between. And then I'm going to use my needle to tuck in those edges so that I've got a neat seam. So I'm tucking them in back to 
the sketch lines, the outlines of the shape. Then I'm going to slide my needle just in the pattern fabric, just inside that fold a little way, hop over to the plain fabric and slide my needle one or two millimetres along inside the fold. And this is called a ladder stitch and it gives an invisible join. Now I'm hopping back to the pattern side and sliding my needle along that fold again. And I just keep tucking as I go to make sure my wing shape is accurate. Use my needle. Just pinching that with my fingers just to hold those tucks in place. And then I'm going to slide my needle inside that fold on the plain side again, just to create a little stitch. Hop back to the pattern side catch a little bit of the seam and pull through and when we pull that thread tight it's going to close up those stitches and leave no trace that anything different happened here so you can whip stitch it if you want to but I find that this gives a much neater and more professional finish so I'm just going to work my way all the way along that side. It is frustrating at the beginning, but once you get going and those seams are tucked in, you get a really neat finish. So I'm going to finish with a quilter's knot really close to the seam. And then I'm going to tuck my needle in between the layers of fabric, bring it out anywhere and pull through. And that's going to pull the knot inside the wing then I'm going to pull my thread tight and push back with my scissors as I cut and the end of the thread will just disappear and we've got a really neat seamless turn through there to make our wing shape so now we're going to actually quilt our wings so I've got two strands of my yellow thread here you could use white or blue and I've just knotted the end and I'm going to take it in at the seam and bring it out just at the beginning of that line. And I just want to push that knot inside the wing. So I'm using the eye end of my needle to just push that knot into the seam, pull it tight, and I've got a little bit of a tail, left too much of a tail on my thread. So if you can't get rid of it easily, you can just snip off any thread that's sticking out and that just gives you a really neat beginning and then i'm going to running stitch along all of my little stitch lines now i find it easier to do it in two motions you want to make sure your needle is going perpendicular to the fabric directly through and then directly back again and you'll achieve that much more effectively if you make your stitches in two motions rather than hooking your needle just came unthreaded there <laughs> so I'm just going to work my way all along that bottom line and I want to pull my thread quite tight I want to create that puckered quilted look so I don't want these stitches to be loose and just sitting on the surface I want to pull them quite tight so that the fabric is pulled into the wadding it's going to give loads of texture to our wing shape Now when I get to the end I'm going to take my needle through right at the end there and on the back I'm just going to catch a couple of threads of the fabric and bring my needle inside the fabric up to the next line. And I don't want to pull this one too tight because if I do I'm going to distort my wing shape. So I just want the thread to take up as much space as it needs without leaving it loose or pulling it tight. And then I'm going to start stitching along the next line along and I'm going to work my way back down to the centre of the wing doing exactly the same stitch. So running stitch pulled quite tight all the way along that line. Now I've used running stitch, you could use any stitch you like here, but I wanted to keep it really simple and I'm going to 
just do that with all of the lines and when I've done that this is what I am left with so I've got this lovely quilted feel now this is a brimstone butterfly that I've based this on and they have little orange spots so I've found an orange sequin you could use a tiny little button you could satin stitch this if you want to or you could use a bead I'm going to use beads on the top wing and I've got a tiny knot at the end of my thread and I've cut off the tail and I'm just going to stitch over the sequin so this is kind of couching bringing my needle up at the centre of the sequin and taking it back down right at the edge of the sequin to secure it in place now if this was just a piece of textile art I would just do maybe three stitches but because this quilt is going to be used and washed I'm going to put a good number of stitches in so I think I'm going to do five trying to make them evenly spaced so that it doesn't look strange and that's going to keep our sequin nice and secure So that's my last stitch that's my sequin I quite like the little star as well and I'm going to put a small quilter's knot on the back keeping it really tight to the fabric and I'm just going to take my thread back inside the wing and use my technique to hide the end so pulling the thread tight and pushing back on the scissors as I cut so I'm just going to repeat that process for the other three wings and then we'll come back and look at the next stage here are my four wings so I've got my two pattern top wings and two plain bottom wings and so now I just want to work on the panel so I've got two strands of my dark green thread here and I'm going to stitch in the flight path we're going to do this with running stitch just like we did with our bee and our ladybird I do find that with one layer of fabric a rocking motion keeps your stitches nice and even so if you just let your needle go to its natural earliest pivot point you're going to get evenly spaced stitches so I'm just keeping my stitches nice and even and working my way all the way along that flight path line just going around the loop and I'm going to work all the way down to the end of the line and I want to stitch into what will be the seam allowance and that will help me get a really seamless line we're going to extend this flight path onto another block and we want to make sure the line is totally seamless so I want to hide the end of that line inside the seam allowance so there's my flight path I'm now going to put in the antennae so I'm going to do this with a whipped back stitch bring my needle up work back towards the butterfly head and then bring my needle forward back again to the end of that first stitch and forward back to the end of the previous stitch and forward again and when I get to the top of the antenna I want to bulk that out a little bit so I'm just going to add a few extra stitches so that it's like a little ball on the end of the antennae I've got my threads here have come separate from each other so they're not behaving <laughs> as I want them to so if that happens just hold the end of your thread and take your needle down to the surface of the fabric and then pull it back out again and it'll even up your threads I don't know why I didn't do it sooner I just spend a lot of time trying to pull individual threads here but um, yeah I'm just thickening up the end of that antenna and then I'm going to bring my needle up at the end and start whipping those stitches so I'm just sliding my needle under each stitch working from bottom to top and working my way back down the antenna and then at the end I'm going to take it back through 
to the back and finish off and then I'll put in the second antenna in exactly the same way. So now I'm going to attach the wings to the backing fabric and I'm starting with the bottom wings because I want them to be slightly underneath. I've laid it onto the backing fabric and I'm holding it in place with my thumb, making sure that it's inside those guidelines that I drew right at the beginning. And we're going to use an applique stitch for this. So I've got two strands of my yellow thread and I've brought my needle through both the backing fabric and the wing just inside the wing and I'm keeping all of these stitches inside the outline of the body then I'm going to take my needle back down just through the backing fabric keeping my needle tucked right in close to the edge of the wing and I'm going to stitch with small applique stitches all the way down the part of the wing that is sitting inside the body shape they do look slightly flimsy but we're going to put a body on top and that's going to secure them even more. Then I'm going to just hop across and add my second wing in exactly the same way, working my way back up towards the upper wings and then I'm going to add the top two wings in exactly the same way. So now we're going to make the body. I've got a tiny scrap of black fabric here and I've just folded it over so I've got a double layer. And I've got my body template. I'm just cutting that out with my paper scissors. And I've got my white heat erase pen here. It doesn't show up for a while. It takes some time to develop. So just trust me that I could see the lines. And I'm just going to draw around that shape so that I've got an outline to stitch along and we're going to stuff this and make a more three-dimensional body. So we're going to stitch this around that outline, just going around it again. It will develop. White heat erase pen takes some time to develop. So you will start seeing the white lines shortly. Just starting a little way down the right hand side of the body and I'm going to back stitch this. So I'm just Starting off, I've got two strands of my dark green here. I'm going to work my way back down towards the tail of the butterfly and stitch all the way around the outside with back stitch. But I want to leave a little bit of an opening, so I don't want to go all the way back round to the beginning. So again, try and keep your stitches small and close together so that you've got a really secure outline and then these are the bits of wadding that are left over that are trimmed off our wing shapes and there's plenty here to stuff our butterfly body so i'm just going to take a tiny amount and use my scissors to poke it inside in between the two layers of fabric so that i'm adding a little bit of dimension now you can stuff this as fully or as softly as you like you needn't stuff it at all you could just use some bondo web and applique the body shape that's fine but i wanted mine to be a little bit poofy and then when you have filled your body shape as fully as you like you just use your thread to close up the gap so i'm just back stitching along the rest of that outline so that I've got no space. I'm going to secure that on the back with a quilter's knot and then I'm going to trim around my body and get as close to my stitch line as I possibly can. So when you're happy that your body is the size that you want it to be, I'm just going to applique stitch this on again so I've laid it onto my backing fabric over the outline and I'm just holding it in place I've got two strands of my dark green and I'm just going to applique stitch over the edge all the way around to hold my body shape in place and these stitches are going to keep those wings really secure so we've got two layers of stitching holding these wings in place and it's going to make them a little bit more fixed as well so without the body they are very loose and flappy this is going to control them a little bit more so they will be dimensional but they won't be flopping all over the place 
So I'm just, as I go, tucking any rough bits in and making sure I'm getting really, really close to my original stitch line here. That's what you can see me doing with the point of the needle sometimes, just making sure any rough bits are under control. And so that's my body stitched on. Now we're going to work a little bit of magic here. I've got my ironing pad and I'm just going to spritz my fabric to get rid of my aqua pen lines. And you can see it's quite crumpled there. Now what we've effectively done is a technique called trapunto and we've added bulk to our butterfly and that bulk wants to go somewhere. I apologise for the wobbly camera. <laughs> That's me ironing enthusiastically. Um, so that bulk wants to go somewhere and it it would naturally pull our block out of shape. But by ironing it flat underneath the wings, you can see that I'm lifting the wings up to iron. We're forcing the fabric to go in a direction that it doesn't really want to go. So I'm getting really close into the butterfly there to flatten out the fabric. And you can see there's some puckers there. If I just pull my fabric ever so slightly to just reshape it just while it's still a bit damp, the distortion that should be in the backing fabric has almost transferred to the wings and makes them stand proud. So if I hold my fabric at a slightly different angle, you can see that the distortion that should be in the backing fabric has almost transferred to the wings and because we've been really careful with our quilting the backs of the wings look really neat so we've got a really cute three-dimensional butterfly so here's our finished block i hope you've enjoyed that i really loved making this one it can be a little bit fiddly at times and you should feel free to just do a bond webbed butterfly if this seems like it's going to be too much but I think it just adds lots of life and dimension and another flappy element to our quilt. If you have enjoyed that please do give us a like we really appreciate it just hit that thumbs up button and let us know that you've enjoyed this video. Do share your creations at hashtag FSH23Quilt so that way we can see everyone's version together. If you have enjoyed this and want something similar I will link some videos over here and if you want to see more of our content you can subscribe to our channel by just clicking on our logo down here. Thanks so much for watching, have a great week making your brimstone butterfly block and I will see you in the next video. Bye!